Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Joel Elston here. Today is Thursday, February the 8th, 2018, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Your first daily dose of happy for the day, and uh, we are going to practice thriving today. That's going to be the topic for the day. We're going to try to explore the courage to thrive. And I have to tell you, Joel, that uh, thriving has becoming a has become a, a big thing around here anyway, because we have a number of thriving activities going on, including, first of all, the book is coming along really nicely. We're still on schedule to release it, uh, hopefully by the end of February, and uh, I mean, the stories that have been coming in have been absolutely fantastic. Uh, I mean, the, people are going to like this one, Joel. They're going to find this book to be inspiring. They're going to find it to be exciting. It's going to get them going every day. It's going to help them thrive. Awesome. I can't I can't wait to see, you know, while I'm a contributor to the book, I you haven't are. seen the other stories. So I'm equally as excited just to read the other versions of, of, of what's happening and, and how the Law of Attraction is helping in, in clients' lives all over the country. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is going to be at least right now, <clears throat> excuse me, right now the current count is almost 40 stories about manifestations in people's lives, um, and mostly in the lives of uh, life coaches like yourselves. And uh, the, the number keeps increasing. I'm not sure what the exact count is going to be when we're done, but uh, this is a book that uh, people will be able to spend a lot of good time on. Plus, we have another new thing happening. I have not yet told you about this, Joel, so this is your first... Uh, chance to hear about this but tom wells and i were talking on uh, monday about how cool it is when you receive phone calls during the show and you know uh you and i have long had the dream of of doing the uh the the drive time show during the morning and during the afternoon which is what led to the time slots that we've chosen uh you know being the ones that we've chosen and they're great we love them the problem of course is that people aren't usually near their phones at the time so calling in isn't always the best opportunity so tom and i are going to add a single evening time slot starting this tuesday february 13th uh 9 to 10 p.m eastern time we're going to uh do a special show just for the purpose of giving people a chance to call in so it's an experiment we're going to see you know how many people actually want to call in and and talk to our ugly mugs <laughs> well I, I love the idea it, it seems to me that the people that i hear from people about the the show and and i always encourage people to call in and and whether it's the time slot or the difficulty of, of, of being able to call and at least a perception, I, I think people misunderstand. We're not looking for them to solve any problems or, or, you know, give us any advice. It's just either sharing your experience right. or at least say, hey, how could this help me in, in my situation? And, and, and sort of that, starting that back and forth. And, and I, I think there's, there's an intimidation for some people to get on the radio and, and share something like that. But it really, you know, it, it, it is not our goal. And I think everybody that listens to us would realize that to uh, surprise or hijack or embarrass anyone. It would be simply to assist people in their understanding or, or support the stories that they've used the law of attraction to their benefit as well. Oh, absolutely. And in fact, the calls that we've had so far, we have had some calls. Most of them have been from people doing exactly what you just described. They wanted to just call in and share. Or In one case, we had one gentleman who called in who's been a longtime listener, dating back to when you and I were doing the weekly shows together. And he just wanted to call to say he enjoyed the shows, which was great. We loved that. It was wonderful when he called in that day. So, yeah, there's, those are all perfectly valid and useful reasons to call in. And, and plus... When you get the caller, uh, the listener to call in, you get a completely different perspective because everybody brings a different perspective to the whole topic. That's what I've learned by talking with you and the other four co-hosts because you all have a different viewpoint. I mean, you, you all have expertise. You're all really good at it. You just think about it differently, and it's really useful to, to explore that. Well, and, and I love that because, you, you, you know, to me, that's where that's where the strength lies. I I, I don't have, as you know, I'm, I'm doing, working on, I'm doing studies in metaphysics right now. Right. And I'm, I'm fascinated by that and the various lessons and, and I, I tend to see the law of attraction in everything. So everything metaphysical is, is the law of attraction <laughs> to me. Uh, and other people don't necessarily see it that way. There's other people that are, are attracted to other areas of metaphysics and I, always will then bring it right back around to the law of attraction. Well, they'll, they'll tend to bring it back to their 
their, their area of, of thought. And, I, and even though we end up at the same place, I love perspectives that are different. And, and, and I, I don't think that anyone gets it exactly right. I mean, I, I, I've always used the example of, of like Mike Dooley, for example. He, he talks a lot about just, just generally think about what you're wanting and success and have a, and, and that's how you manifest. Right? Well, other, other gurus or, or, or people like Abraham Hicks, for example, get very specific. Get a vision board. Put the exact house you want on your vision board. They're both different views, and they both have worked great for the people reporting them. And it, 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 within metaphysics, there's a discussion. We were having a discussion last week about the placebo effect, and, and not just medicine, but in life. And it, I believe that it translates over to the law of attraction as well. If you believe it's going to work the way you're doing it, it's going to work. Because it isn't the, the way you're doing it as much as your belief in how you're doing it. Yes. And that's the beauty of it all. Oh, exactly. I agree with you completely. In fact, that's partly what inspired the topic for today, because in order to do some of these things, you have to be willing to kind of go outside the comfort zone. And, you know, that that raises the question, when do you when do you leave the comfort zone? When do you stay in the comfort zone? Because, well, there's a good reason why we call it the comfort zone. It's comfortable. It feels good. But yet, nevertheless, very often in order to grow, we have to leave it. And I figured this was a good topic for you to talk with me because you have a long history of leaving the comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I, 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 I have decided the comfort zone is the most uh, debilitating place for me to exist. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and, and, and it almost is counterintuitive to what we're saying until you view it as, I, I, I again believe, like you and I have talked and, and you necessarily haven't always agreed with all this, this version of stuff, but I, I'm very much a believer in me making up my own definition of words. Or, or, or you can't, I have no one that can dictate to me whether a word is positive or negative. I view it that way. I, like with me struggle, it, I try to struggle every day. I want to struggle. I need to. I need to fight hard to struggle because that's a strengthening event for me. Mm-hmm. In my in in someone's comfort zone, struggle is scary. Struggle is effort. Struggle is is let. Uh, I I don't want to do that. And so, to me, the comfort zone or, or the courage to thrive is the willingness to step out there and the willingness to do it differently. The willingness to get away from where you've been and, and it, it's so it's so cliche often but when when people are telling me okay here's my situation and we talk about different methods of doing it and it's like well you know I, i've tried everything and then when i ask the question and start breaking things down have you really tried anything different you haven't tried anything but the same thing and when i am pursuing comfort instead of that next passionate type thing uh whatever i have whatever i'm bringing to the table I, I find myself sort of stagnant in life. Comfort is stagnant to me. Thriving is action. It's moving forward. It's, it's, it's actual physical manifestation of things because our comfort is, it, you're, you're signaling to the universe in comfort often. I got everything just like I want it. I just, I, I just like I want it. There, there's no need for anything else. I'm totally where I want to be. And there's, there's spiritual gurus will say that's a good place to be at. But when you're trying to bring change to your life, comfort signaling an exact opposite event to the law of attraction. Mm-hmm. And so, well, it's also signaling a direct opposite to what you're trying to accomplish. Because if you're trying to make a change and you're trying to stay in the same comfort zone, those really don't work too well together. But when, when you're talking with Not your when, when you're talking with one of your clients, um, and I'm sure you deal with this kind of thing every single time, uh, a lot of the time you're dealing with somebody who has both. A need to stay in their comfort zone, in their view, and a need to make a change. And I, I guess I'm wondering, what is it that you find happens most often that makes people decide they want to be courageous? They want to have the courage to thrive and get out of the comfort zone and, and just do something they haven't done before. What, what's, what usually is the, the biggest factor there? It, it well, it, it, it's almost as, it's it's totally totally an individual thing. What becomes a driving force to make that leap? It sometimes it's it's just the realization that I have done this repetitively now for X number of years. I'm in the same place. It's not reasonable to expect a different result from what I'm doing. 
and to do something different is out of my comfort zone, but it really is the only option left. Most, most people, have, you know, whether they realize it or not, they get to a point where they just get tired of being where they're at. And they just say, I don't want this life anymore. And then they make that, that decision. The next move is going to be uncomfortable. And they've been defined or they, they've been, a definition has been enforced upon them that being comfortable is the goal of life. Well, it, it for some people it is, but it creates that. It, and this is no disrespect to anybody in how they're doing life. But if, if you if you want to be within a situation where nothing changes and you're going to keep bringing about what you're doing and, and you're exactly happy where you want to be, then you need to keep doing exactly what you're doing. It's, it's, it's okay for you because that's what you're bringing to yourself and to your environment. But the courage to move forward and to thrive, if you want to do that, is going to require a different set of actions. And usually – the difference and your actions may be uncomfortable for me and my actions may be uncomfortable for you. So that's why it's an individual thing. But I usually find that most people, when they're understanding that staying, you know, it, it's, it sounds so simple, but staying where you're at or in the mindset that you're at is going to keep bringing you to the same point every time. And that, that becomes a catalyst to say, I got to explore new ways to do this. Now I'm going to, hazard a guess here and you tell me if I'm wrong but my guess is most often when you get a new client and that client comes in the door the one thing that they're hoping for more than anything else is not that they're going to have to make the change but that you you can fix it for them am I wrong absolutely no you're you're well that that's that's the the perceived idea that I've I've tried this a million different ways and I haven't gotten there so please please here it is I'm handing it over to you to please fix it (laughs) and and, and that would be a wonderful world if I could. And <laughs> ironically, I could simply say, well, here's the answer. A lot of times it's, it, it would be real apparent, not that I'm a genius, that anybody could have seen it, you know. Um, but it, 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 from where they're sitting, it, they're unable to see that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, so I, I'm hoping that people, when they come in, are open to the concept of me leading to them to their end of it, leading them to their individual uh, fix, so to speak, for their situation, and that and that's where the process begins. I, you know, I could simply say, well, you clearly need to do one, two, and three, and that would be doing a lot different. Well, they're they're not. First of all, they're not going to do it because they haven't done it. It's an obvious answer. It, you know, it's in using a really wild, uh, not even wild, but a, but a very common example of um, somebody comes in. Look. Um, I, I'm I'm having a trouble I'm having trouble with alcohol. Every night I have a quart of vodka and I pass out. Okay, well, yeah, that's a pretty serious the, problem. The, the, yeah, it is. And and the remedy is real simple. Well, stop drinking quart of vodka. Stop drinking, it, it, right. Okay, problem fixed. Give me my check. But, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but it, it it the problem isn't the it it what we often think the problem is is not really what the problem is right it's getting them to understand what's the point behind the alcohol why why do they need that where's that coming from and then helping them understand there's a new way to cope with that and and then you have to walk them through that then they have the courage to make the change and realize is the problem is most people do not have a lack of 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 that most people's problem with money, for example, is not a lack of money. It's their belief they have a lack of money. And mm-hmm. that that's where getting them to understand that it, it's so hard to do because money has been such a factor. That's why poverty, I believe, is such a uh, – it, it's, it tends to run in families for generations, not because the, these families are cursed or not because these families aren't smart, but it's just because that's what they've come to expect. Money is a struggle, so it will always be a struggle. Right, yeah. It's, it, I, I see that with health. I see it with, you know, I, I'm, what, what, there's a famous actress uh, uh, that, that has the, the gene, the potential to have breast cancer. So her response was to go have her breast removed. Mm. Wow. And while, while I'm not, I mean, I'm obviously not her situation. I'm just using that. Her, her interpretation, well, the potential is there, so let me get, get preemptive and have them removed now before yeah. I have it. Yeah, that, well, that's pretty severe. That, 
Yeah, it is pretty severe. It, and, and so she had already brought about, this is what's going to happen, so let me take action. So it, 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 it really, it, maybe that was her cure, uh, what she needed to do, versus the concept of, huh, you know, I, I don't necessarily think I'm going to do that, or I, I can change my perspective on things. And, and that's where the placebo effect or the, it's such a real effect in life. The, when you understand your thoughts are driving this, your thoughts are driving your life, and your perception of, of struggle or, or I ha- that's hard. When you say struggle to me, I think of somebody, you know, doing manual labor or, or you know, or I, I look at struggle as tackling the problem. Everything that comes along is going to require effort. And if I'm trying hard enough, I'm going to struggle with it, and then I want to get stronger. The, the process of the struggle will make me stronger. So I embrace struggle. I embrace failure. I embrace those as character-building events. And, and so that it makes life you know, I, I think that's sort of like the supercharging portion of my life of, of having the courage to thrive and understanding thriving will have struggle involved and it will have failure involved. And that's okay. That's good that it's okay. Um, I, oh, geez, I just blanked out. <laughs> I was going to lead this to someplace and I forgot where it was going. <laughs> this is where I should well, be well, making well, notes well, during well, the show. <laughs> I, 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 I took a little breather there to let you pop in, but I, I got to you know, I never have. I'm never without more. You know that. Um, oh yeah. Oh, I know what it was. I remember what I was going to say. You have a, a very interesting practice that we haven't touched on in a long time now. But you, every time that you get a new client, you hand them a copy of The Secret by Rhonda Byrne, which is the first book that yes. I ran into as well on the whole topic of LOA. And that that's a really interesting idea because what you're really doing, I think, is you're giving them hope. You're giving them hope in a book and assuming that they are willing to at least look at and read the book, they get that, that jolt of hope themselves. And, and I would think that that hope you know, kind of takes you to the next step uh, toward be, having that courage to thrive, having that courage to take steps and to, to actually you know, take on the challenge yourself and, and you know, get past it and, and get on to making the improvement you want to make in your life. Yes, and that, that's the point of it. That no matter what someone's facing, I have a belief that if, when they adjust their attitude and they move forward, there's nothing that I have dealt with in my practice that is not fixable. And, and I've never seen a problem that isn't fixable. I've, I've, and, and it usually is adjusting the attitude to understand that the problem isn't the problem anyway. And, and, and it's almost an instant fix for some people. Mm-hmm. But the, the idea that giving, when you wake, the reason you wake up every morning is hope of something better. The reason you get out of bed, that life would make no sense if there was hope of nothing better. It would be an exercise of futility. Right. But there's always hope of better. So when you give people hope who are hopeless or you tell them there is a way to do this, uh, it, it really opens up the, 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 the conduit for the law of attraction to, to take place. And that's the beauty of it. It, it. it starts with hope. And then you change that hope into a belief. And, and that's where the, the magic really starts to happen. And I, I, I just choose the secret because it is, you know, that we have a lot of quality books out there and probably some much more in-depth books on the concepts of the law of attraction. Mm-hmm. But the secret is, to me, the, the, the best layman's book to open the mind to the concept. You know, right. it, if I were to give everyone the book Seth Speaks, Day one, they're never yeah. coming back. No, probably um, not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, you're like, oh no, no, no. This guy's crazy. But the secret is written in a way where it's sort of the the gateway. Mm-hmm. And um, for those of for those of our audience members who are old enough, and they prob- most probably are, um, I, I, I sort of equate it. It's the secret is AOL. When I first started yeah, right. on the internet, <laughs> AOL was the internet. It to was, me. yeah, yeah. It was for most people. And so, <laughs> yeah. And, so it's and, like, yeah, it's the internet. And the thing to me, the, the, the secret it, it is an inspirational book. It makes you feel better. It makes you feel like there's hope. It gives you a sense that, yes, you really can kind of get life under your own control, which is what most of us want anyway, particularly if we're seeking out a therapist. Um, I have to say, recently, I have a new book that is now my favorite as an introduction, but I also recognize it's not 
always the perfect introduction. Sometimes, particularly for someone who's in a really bad place, like clients are when they come to your office, I think perhaps the secret maybe is better for somebody like that. Um, the, the book that I'm liking is called The Law of Attraction, The Basics of the Teachings of Abraham. I, I just love the way the, the subject is presented there. But I'm liking that as a primer for somebody who really wants to understand how the law of attraction works and understand all yes. the ins and outs of it. And it's beautiful for that. It's absolutely beautiful for that. Yes, it is. Yeah. It, it, is, it is my favorite book on the subject, uh, but it, at least in my opinion, that, that for somebody walking in the door, a lot of times you, you have to see where people are at. I, the secret to me was just enough of the law of attraction and using real life examples like, ah, oh, that makes sense. Well, Oprah used the law of attraction. You know, I, yeah, I, I right. can see that. Yeah, sure. uh, and, and, you know, so it, it, it opened the gateway to, you know, there's a book I've recently discovered, Walt, and I'm going to recommend that. I, I'm, I'm shocked that I've never run across this one. It's called Thought Vibration or the law of attraction in the thought world. Hmm. And it's by a guy named William Walker Atkinson. Okay. But this is the crazy piece for me. It was written in 1906. Whoa, really? And it is the most comprehensive explanation that, and then when you take it that that's out there today in my mind, that, and when you take into account it was written in 1906, it is, I mean, they're talking about thought waves, the process of reproduction, uh, of how their the thought waves are energy and they reproduce by bringing stuff back. Again, in 1906, this book is amazing. And I, I, I just, uh, in my studies of, of metaphysics, this is one of the recommended uh uh, reading topics, and 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 I, I just more than anything, I'm baffled that I've never run across it before. I don't even recognize it, and I, I thought I was pretty well steeped in this stuff. William Walker Atkinson, that's his name. Yes, and it's it's the uh, the title again, long title, is Thought Vibration or the Law of Attraction in the Thought World. Wow. And. It, it blows me away with uh, they, it has affirmations and brain exercises and the fact that it was written there in 1906 is in, they talk about a universal uh, uh, access to a universal thought, a universal willpower that you can access and stuff. It's just uh, um, the desire uh, is the driving force and, and it's just a really good stuff. So I, I, I suggest maybe you read that, Walt. Maybe our uh, maybe our listeners might find it interesting. But again, these are all great things to introduce you to the theories, and 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 then I, I don't take everything like a lot of people with the Abraham Hicks stuff have a lot of problem with the you know how it's delivered, the message is delivered. Um, well, I'm like, just if that bothers you, forget that. Just listen to the message. <laughs> Absolutely. The message is solid. Oh, yeah, totally. And I am going to check out that book. I, you're right. I have not heard of that one. That, but, I mean, when you're reading the title to me, I'm thinking, whoa, how did we all miss that one? I mean, that that's just – because there are a lot of people out there who present information about law of attraction. I have never heard that one mentioned by anyone. You're the first person who's ever mentioned it. Like, how did we miss yeah, that? It, it's I, – I, it, well, I was baffled about when I was reading it. I, I I'm like – my initial reaction when I was reading it, I, I didn't look at the time uh, or when it was written, and I, I'm like, "Well, this is this is going to be a bestseller," <laughs> and um, you know, and and so I and then I'm, I'm looking at it more. I was going to actually order it. I, I was given the literature you know, um, through my studies, and it, it, it's like, "Oh my goodness, this is!" I wanted to contact this man and thinking, "Well, I'm <laughs> probably easier now to contact him the other way because he's yeah, not right. here physically <laughs> anymore." So. Uh, um, but it, but it, it's just they, they talk about the psychology of emotion uh, and, and, and really light years ahead of his time. Wow. And, I, and, and it's, it's really pretty much everything Abraham Hicks is talking about. Uh, he, he had something, there's a chapter, and I think it was near the, near the back of the book. And again, I go back to 1906. He talks about the concept of the law of attraction developing new brain cells, which was a theory that was unheard of back then. Yeah. 
Yeah, and and, and virtually now unprovable too. It's, it's it's accepted. Yeah, yeah. That that is that is very fascinating. I definitely have to check that out. This is a guy. I mean, talk about having the courage to thrive. There's a guy who had the courage to thrive because I'm sure that the way he presented that was not well received. That's probably why we don't know about it today. That took a lot it, of courage it, to put it, that well, book out. It, it, and if you also, if there's another thing that I, I, and what one of our assignment and how I was reading this book was to compare and contrast um, the science of getting rich and as a man thinketh with mm-hmm. James Allen, right? Um, all those we've heard of before. Yeah. Um, you know, and and you know the 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 idea that as a man thinketh uh, really really you know one of the solid classics. Uh, law of attraction, real early stuff. But when you compare and contrast these books, you would not, you just could not believe the 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 difference in where they're at. Now, it, it, like for example, not that this is relevant. And I don't mean this negative, um, and some people will probably take it this way. But it, in the science of getting rich, the word God is entwined probably I, I don't know 150 times in the book. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and because it's very much written with almost like, I, I, I don't want to affect the religious people. These were all written about the same time, way back in the 1900s. Right. But they were written, the early 1900s, and they were written with the, and so as a man thinks, mentions God a few times, um, the science of getting rich is, it's, it's almost like, make sure you understand I'm incorporating God in all these processes. Right. Whereas, and I, and I think we have our answer here, but when you, the thought attraction book, it's not God's not mentioned at all. Wow, I yeah. was. I mean, that's really it's not the word God is not in there. Because at that time, to not include reference to the Christian God, especially if you publish this in America, that took guts. That took a lot of guts. I, I mean, and, and, Cindy and I were talking about yeah. an author that she, that she likes called uh, Florence Scovel Shin, who published a book back in the nineteen twenties, nineteen twenty five, I think it was called "The Game of Life and How to Play It." And it was also a uh, new thought. It was it was law of attraction, and presented in a way that again it, it fed into the popular way of thinking about things, i.e., Christian God. And she includes Christian scripture and so forth. So there's another example of of that same phenomenon. This guy going against that and just saying, "Here's how stuff works." To heck with this stuff about the Christian God. That that took balls. Well, and, and I think that's probably why we we don't know about this. And in fact, you know, one of my ideas is uh, uh, I'm doing a little re- have have an attorney look at this right now, but I'm pretty confident this entire work in, is in the public domain. Probably is. So I'm thinking about just republishing it with my insight attached yeah. as, a, as a book. Oh yeah, yeah. I want to look it up. I want to find it now because oh my goodness, that yeah. now there are a number of early references to the phrase the law of attraction in fact i think david did a uh, little research on and found something that reached back to like 1860 or something like that so i mean the phrase has been around for a while but i don't remember hearing about any of them that talked about it in the modern way from that far back i'm, I'm just really impressed but that's an right. example and, of and, it's, it's an example to follow that, because we're talking about having the courage to thrive. We're talking about having the courage to take steps outside of the comfort zone. I mean, if that guy can do it at that time in American history and step out in such a huge way, then what's stopping the rest of us from stepping out in a small way? The, and that, and that's, that, that's why I love this title and how this goes together. But uh, it, it really is just such a, a, a unique vision and the courage to do it. You know, one of the things that, um, that I've always found fascinating is, is, and, and again, no disrespect. And, and I, I believe in God, so I'm not trying to in any way um, act like I don't, but I, I know I always hear, especially from our fundamentalist friends, you know, I, I declare God is my situation and I, I'm not ashamed to say that. Well, you're not ashamed to say it because you're in the middle of the same group of people. You live in the same town where everybody believes the same thing. So saying it is actually, you know, it isn't that courageous to go into a Baptist church and claim Jesus Christ your Savior. Not really, it's, no. You know, and again, I'm not being disrespectful, but the way they represent it is I'm making this great courageous stand. Well, 
this gentleman, whether you, not because and he doesn't, he's not anti-God. The law of attraction is a total gravity. Believing in gravity doesn't separate your, you from your spiritual beliefs. Right. But this guy's point is, this is a thing that stands alone. So he, for him to write this at that time is as it, it, I could just I'm, I can't believe he didn't get prosecuted on something. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. It's, it, it's just it would be considered. You know, it truly would be considered just just blasphemy. Oh, not yeah. because he mentions anything negative at all about God, but it's it just just, talk, just because he's the, he's the one that talks about the manifestation of the word "I am." What you say after "I am" is important. Hmm. He's talking about this in 1906. Yeah, yeah, way way ahead of his time. So zooming forward yeah. to today, we're in the the 2000s now. You get a client in your office, and you, it's pretty clear to you that, you know, you gave the example, for instance, of the person who's drinking a quart of vodka a day. That's a pretty serious problem. You know, so this is a person who needs to kind of take that step outside the comfort zone and make some changes. So what, I mean, you, you talked about how they have to kind of hit uh, bottom, so to speak. Um, once they hit bottom, what's next? Well, how, how do they take that first step? How, because that's really anything that any listener could also identify with. If you need to, to get out of the comfort zone, you need to take a, a first step. How do you take it? Well, the, the, in, in a sense, the, the first thing is, is you need to – there's usually – let's start with the, sort of the concept of an event. There's usually an event that caused them to want to stop, whatever okay. it is. Let's, let's not even – alcohol is too obvious. Let's, you know, um, a, a gentleman has lost his third job in a row in less than a year. Okay. Um, he's not thriving. He comes to me. So we'll call the event – him losing a job. Now there's three events, but this last event is the one we're going to focus on. Right. You know, what, what happened? So we're, you know, I, I don't want to keep losing jobs. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. What am, where am I going with this? So the person is baffled that he's in a place that he's lost three jobs in a row. The first one could clearly be the, the other company's fault or the company's fault. The second one, well, now you got to start looking at it. Now the third one, we got to start looking at what you're doing. Right. What, what are you doing to do that? So we start by just identifying where we're at and, and an honest assessment of where we're at. And in this case, the honest assessment is it's, it's, an, it's an event that I lost my job. And I lost my job three times. So I need to change that. So that's where we start. We start with that process. Then going forward, we, we say, okay, now that we have identified that, let's, let's start looking at, you know, the, what, what happens next? You know, what, what do you need to do? Can we get an accurate visual of what's happening? Can you visualize what has happened to get us here and sort of walk, and I walked him through or that we walked through together this concept of any commonalities between the three losing of the job. Did they say the same thing? Did they all, did you have issues with the same people or, and, or not the, obviously not the same people, but the people in authority. And we try to extrapolate from what's happening um, the commonality if that makes any sense. And, oh, yeah. and we, so, so once we've done that, then, we've, then you can usually find the, the, the various things in, inside of, of, of what's happening. You can see everybody saying, yes, I see this clearly. Here's how I got here. That doesn't change anything, but at least it gets us to a place of, wait a minute, let me, let me look at this from a little different perspective. I, I, this maybe is me. And so then, then by identifying that it could be him, that possibility, and what behavior led to that, and then we start to identify the different behaviors and how, number one, we have to stop this behavior. We, we have to. I've actually, the case that I'm thinking about as we're talking, I had the guy, the, the second job he lost in the, the three, he actually did pretty well. The people really liked him. Um, and he said, you know, let me call them and ask exactly what happened. Not that I want to sue them, and, and, you know, but I really need to understand what, what happened. And he called them and he said, well, to be honest with you, you know, we, we let you go because you did not have the ability to take direction. Hmm. You, you wouldn't listen to what we're saying. And we, we tried, we've given you written warnings, and you said you would understand, but you kept doing it your way instead of accepting you work for us 
And, and so, you know, but we, we broke that down. We broke, you know, where did that come from? And then we saw this piece. And, and so since he has a personality that doesn't like conformity, so we can, we start looking at other answers and say, maybe, possibly, let's think about this. Maybe I'm looking for the wrong jobs. Yeah. Maybe I need jobs where I don't have to conform to exactly what they're doing. What, what jobs would those be? Right. And so then we start looking, you know, we, we walk through the process and then as the person starts to get into the, to the, wow, I, I'm getting this, the, the courage to change, you know, when I here, and I'll use me for an example, when I got, went to work for my dad in the insurance agency years ago. Right. And it was, I have really bad ADHD and, and a really good ADHD, depending on your point of view. Um, <laughs> but ADHD and the, and the brain working in an insurance agency where you're adding up numbers all day and you're working all these fine detail contracts, absolutely not. It doesn't match. So what I had to do was, in, in a much different sense, I had to say, wait a minute, how am I going to adjust this within the insurance business? How am I going to get my ADHD brain around it? So I approached my dad, and I didn't know what I was doing at the time, but I was really good at the sales portion of the job, but I was really bad at the paperwork portion of the job. So I said, Dad, can I get some? Can we hire somebody to let me just sell, and then do the paperwork? Por- have them do the paperwork portion. Well, my dad was old school. He goes, "That's ridiculous. We're not doing that. Mm. No way." And 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 I, you know, I respect him. That's his in his business, his world. He was taught that way. So I, I said, "Okay, well, it is ridiculous." Well, I mean, I. I it didn't take long before everything fell apart and a whole lot of things happened. I ended up leaving, you know, I just can't do the job the way it was. So, so my immediate reaction to Walt and, and in that immediacy was that my experience was in insurance. So I started looking for more insurance jobs. Mm-hmm. So even though insurance was not my thing, I began looking for insurance jobs. Does that make sense? You know, because that, that oh, was yeah. I was conditioned for that behavior. Well, sure. I mean, you didn't know anything and, else, and you figured, well, it, it couldn't be anything about the way you work. It couldn't be anything about right. you know, that 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 you have to adjust or anything like that. It's got to be you just didn't have the right job. Your your father just was the wrong person to work for. So you started right. with the assumption, okay, right. just find you know this job in insurance. Yes. And, and that became the answer for me of, of my mental answer was, well, you know, obviously working for your dad is not a good idea. I, right. I, I, if I go and, and insurance wasn't going to be it for me. I didn't need to be an accountant. I didn't, didn't need to be an insurance. I, I needed to, but I wasn't able to see outside of what I had developed or a perception of a comfort zone. And stepping out of that box was, was scary. And that's what most people get into. So somebody walks in the office, they have a problem. They, they, they've lost jobs is you walk them through seeing this and then you focus. And I choose to focus on let's find your strengths. If we've already identified, you don't conform very well, but what are your strengths and what does that do? And then we, we start brainstorming another law of attraction event, masterminding, group sort of mm-hmm. and we start what areas could look and, and not not looking at at education or or what you'd have to do let's not look at the negatives of what let's look at how we move forward what do we do what do we move forward with we we it, it makes sense to use your strength as we look for something new then that gets them motivated so now that you understand that you're going to have to start making changes in your your perspective of things you you are no longer in this you know for being in that that world where you had to conform to everything you're going to have to adjust your 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 work ethic the way you work how you're going to do things so what changes can that person make let's apply them are they willing to make the changes and then as you convince them as they see hope in this process that's when they open up and it it, it it's there isn't a everyone that walks in the door has a different stepping mechanism toward this but there's always that moment where you can almost see them on see it on their face where they go yes i get it and and they have that aha moment or that Mm. moment where there's clarity that i i've been looking at this wrong 
Um, I, I think I've used this example a long, long time ago, but it's one of my favorite examples. Um, I, I had a really rough time, as you remember, in my early in my mm-hmm. recovery from addiction, and um, my life was really bad. And I have a, um, I have a little cousin that, uh, you know, we we all, always hang out with him. He's a great, great kid. And, um, I was living in a house in South Tampa, and it was. My electricity had been turned off. I had no money. I was about to be evicted. The place was a mess. And, and I had that moment where I really needed to change. I knew I had to pull myself out of the depression. So I asked him if he would help me come clean. And in exchange for that, we'd go to the movies. And, um, and he, of course, that was, a, he, I think he was 12 at the time. So that was a great idea to him. <laughs> and, you know, I, I don't have to pay him except take the movies. It's great right. for me, too. So. We, we get to the, I'm getting to the bathroom and I'm looking at my, my, my shower curtain and it, it, it was originally a white shower curtain, but it was black with mold. Ugh. It was disgusting. Yeah, horrible. And so I, you know, we, we're going to the, the store to get cleaning supplies and I'm at the grocery store and I'm, I'm trying to decide desperately. It sounds silly. There was a bottle of X14. It was $9 <laughs> for a mildew remover. The store brand was three dollars but I, I i didn't want to buy a dilute you know i'm trying to look at the exact ingredients and and so my cousin comes up and he goes joel joel what's coming and i'm like stop i'm trying to figure this out he finally comes back and he hands me a new shower curtain liner for two dollars. <laughs> i love it <laughs> i was stuck on the concept of only cleaning the and and i, I look at him going oh that's not a bad idea. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, 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 it just, it was a no brainer actually, but you, you see my point. I got stuck on one concept. Right. And, and that happens a lot with people and that's the sticking point. So that moment of change that you're looking at that step forward is when people can get past that sticking point that there's only one thing I've seen you do this on a lesser level um, in, in some ways of, of changing the way you do things. And thriving because of that. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and, it's and I've, in a big I've, way. I've witnessed you know, before. It's like okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna do this project, and I'm gonna research it for about six months, <laughs> and I'm gonna do. Some, I'm gonna do some spreadsheets about the research, and then, <laughs> and then maybe some more, maybe some more spreadsheets about the spreadsheets, and then <laughs> maybe I'll move. Well, one day you decided I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do this. Now, it didn't mean you didn't do research. It didn't mean you didn't do due diligence. But you decided to do things differently. That made a that changed a lot of things for you, Walt. Oh yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. The 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 simple fact of taking action has a therapeutic effect that we often overlook. And uh, now this actually leads to my next question too, because when you have a client who you're working with who reaches that aha moment, and from that point on they start taking you know the action they did, need to take in order to change whatever it is they're changing to get basically to climb out of that comfort zone and have that courage to thrive. I mean, you must see some amazing transitions happen as a result of that. Well, you, you see, you, you, you see the mood lift, you see them change in their seat. You see, you feel their energy rise. You, you just see the, wait a minute. I, I have, you know, I had one lady tell me I've been in therapy for seven years and this is the first time I've been in a room where I'm thinking, Oh my God, this, I, I got the answer. And it, it's just, it's almost like, you, you know, when, when I, I, I've described this multiple times, our audience have heard this a bunch with me, is when I discovered the law of attraction, I had that moment of like, okay, that's what I've been looking for. That's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I knew, even though I didn't know anything about it, I knew I'd been looking for a long time for something. Right. And, and I had that aha moment. So when you're in that office and in my office and that person has, you know, whether this, you know, whether it's a kid or a grown up or whatever, but they have that moment where they become empowered. They change their body language. They, their energy is different. They, their, their, their demeanor, they look younger. They look healthier They immediately because there's hope. They walked in with no hope and they have hope there. It's an amazing thing to see happen. Mm. And, and they're walking out with not just hope there. I imagine they're also walking out with a game plan. Uh, because I mean, yes. the, 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 obviously the key part of how law of attraction works is you start with your thoughts and that's what you've been right. dealing with. You've been wrestling with, okay, what, how, how have your thoughts been holding you back 
and what changes do you need to make in your thought process so that your actions will be congruent and you'll end up producing the kinds of results you're looking for. Well, once they've right. come to that real realization and once they have come to understand, okay, this is the change I need to make in the way I've been looking at stuff, and then these are the changes I need to follow up with in terms of what actions I'm going to take, That it, I mean, that has to, over and over again, produce amazing results. Well, it does. And, and, and you know, when you give somebody, when we sit somebody down and, and I've, I've and so I'll ask somebody, what's your goal? Well, I'm making 50 grand and I want to make 500,000 this year. It's just not going to happen. Not because, not because it can't happen. It's just, you don't really believe that. Right. You, you, you spent the last five years making 50 grand. You don't really believe it, but do you believe you can make 60? Yeah, I can make 60. Okay, let's let's focus on 60 right now. Mm -hmm. Well, you give them a, a, a an attainable goal, yep. an action to meet that goal, and then the little successes start to go up. I, uh, the One of the ones that I, I use often is a gentleman that worked for Comcast. He came in, he was um, he, he was in the sales position, and he was making probably about 60 grand a year. And he, he said, I just want more. I'm, I'm not getting – so I asked him what the most – who in his position made the most money? What was the salary? And he said, they probably about 125,000. So they're making more than double you. I said, can you do that? He goes, he had a million reasons of why that guy did it. And he couldn't, I said, wow. okay. but let's start with, do you believe you can make 70 with just a little bit of stuff? So we added, you know, he, we looked at a schedule and there were, there was about an hour and a half spot where he didn't have much going on. So if you added two calls a day, where you stopped and try to, to sell businesses, uh, internet, stuff like that. We'll, we'll just, it doesn't add anything to your day, just two additional stops and, and we'll do two every day. And if you close one of every five, you'll meet your goal. And well, it turns out he started, he was really closing one of a, every three. And within a few months, he was on pace to make about 75,000 by just doing that little bit. Wow. And, so he could, then now he believes 75 was an issue, attainable, mm -hmm. easily. Oh, yeah. So I said, well, what if we added another stop and, and your skills are getting better, your confidence getting better, and increase, you, you now know where to, what they're looking for and, and hone in your sales skills. Long story short, he, he, he made 102 grand that year. Oh, wow. Big improvement. And yeah. all he did was change. He, 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 he just, change his perspective of that you walk him through that now that's just a money-based thing and and but it also helps in other areas of his life mm -hmm. and the the hope piece you talked about or that courage that hope then gives you the courage to thrive because thriving is almost always going to uh let me word it this way thriving is almost always going to involve uncomfortable change if if you're not thriving now, you're going to have to change. And more than likely, the thing you're going to have to change is probably the thing you don't like the most, mm -hmm. usually. Yeah. So having that courage to do that, you know, the fear of failure, the reason that I redefine struggle and, and failure for me is I was operating in my life for a long time trying not to fail and trying to avoid struggle. And so once I uh, I totally decided to change my two nemesis into my and make them my ally. Mm -hmm. And, and I now use failure as you got to step it up. You didn't fail today. You got to work harder because you need to fail more <laughs> and you need to fail to the point. You're going to be wildly successful and struggle. All the struggle I went through made me the man I am today. So why would I want to avoid struggle? I embrace struggle. I want to go, I want to go tackle a problem. I want to, I want our audience members to realize they're in charge of their perspective of what they're doing. If you look at the grind as a grind, it's a grind. If you look at the grind as a struggle and a way forward, it's a new event. It's exciting. I love the fact, too, that uh, you got upset with yourself for not struggling enough. I mean, that's not the typical thing that your average person hears in a daily conversation. It's quite a different concept. But it, it, and so it makes me laugh, and, and I think it makes a lot of people laugh when they first hear it. But nevertheless, there, there, in any situation that we're in, there's always an opportunity. There's always this silver lining. There's the, the different way of looking at it. And the amazing thing is when we change the way we look at it, we change the result. I mean, that's one of the key concepts that the law of attraction teaches us. The thing that I really love, though, is how you talked about believability. 
because when we believe something, we allow it better. That's one of the key law of attraction concepts, right? The, the art of allowing in whatever it is that you've asked for. Because so often we have a tendency to block it, to, to keep it out there, to not let it in. Well, when you believe it's going to happen, when, you, when your belief is strong, all of a sudden the resistance is gone. And now it gets in. Yes. That's really key. That's important. That, that's actually, yeah. in fact, there was a, a workshop, I think it was. No, it was a book, uh, an Abraham Hicks book. I've been reading a lot of the Abraham books very recently. And there was one of the books, I don't remember which one, that said that the, the human race has gotten very good even before they knew about law of attraction. They've gotten very good at law of attraction. They, uh, yes. Where the law of attraction is simply like attracts like vibration, attracts like vibration and so forth. And they've gotten really, really good at the second law, which is the science of deliberate creation, or the law of creation. And the law of creation, again, that's where you're just you're putting out your request. Again, humans have gotten really good at that. The one where we tend to struggle with, the, the one that tends to get in our way, is the third law, the law of allowing, the law of letting in, yes. the law of not resisting. And boy, did I find yes. that out in my own case. I mean, I, I had no idea how much resistance I had at first. It took me a long time just to realize that the resistance was there. And then once it was there, well, how do you get rid of the resistance and so forth? Well, there's, there's where the belief comes in. And, and so that's why I love the fact that you focus on the belief. Because when you believe it's going to happen, your resistance goes away. Yes. And when you look at what you, – when you break down resistance, and, you, you, and, and most of the time the resistance is based on the illogical facts or facts that have – or beliefs you developed over the years. If – you know, the concept, if money is scarce, and that's a belief you have. So money will always be scarce. If you struggle financially, it, it will always, I'll always struggle financially. It, it doesn't work for me any differently. So that becomes a belief and that. And so to, the, then when you go seek more money, you're seeking it from a position of lack, which you're desperate for money. So you're, you're creating the, the exact opposite of what believing the, the way that it needs to come, the believing that it's out there, that you have this, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be a struggle. The struggle that I'm talking about is the struggle, the, the effort. It's the, let me get up every day and, and, and work hard. And, 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 and like I go to work every day loving what I do. I, I love what I do. I, I'm excited about getting up every day. It's important. It is. And, and, and that, you get up and go to work with an attitude that's different than that, and you don't struggle. In, in the negative sense, I make myself get to a place of working harder in, in other areas, like, you know, writing my books, writing, you know, I'm working on, um, I got a, a, a speech that I'm, I'm, I may have a really nice uh, public speaking engagement coming soon, so I need to update some of my, my public speaking stuff to sort of match what they're looking for. So, I mean, I, 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 mean, I find myself, and, I, and on top of that, I'm, you know, I'm raising a, um, you know, my son, Justin, I'm, I'm raising him as a single dad and then I'm, you know, running my business and, you know, I'm working on my doctorate in metaphysics, you know, it's like, yeah, on the side, my world. <laughs> he's working on What's the doctorate. That? You're working on the doctorate on the side. <laughs> like when you have yeah, spare it's, time, <laughs> it's, it's, it's my hobby. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have one and, of the and, busiest but lives it, I know. <laughs> I love that lifestyle. I love that, that energy. It isn't that everybody's like, I don't know how you do all that. I, said, I don't know how you don't do that. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't you want to do all that? Yeah, it's true. I mean, you have more going on in your life than anyone I know. And the fact that you've been able to use the concept of struggle the way you do um, is, I mean, it's a testament to how far you've come and what kind of growth you've had. But more than that, it, you provide inspiration to people. I love, for instance, the stories you told about um, when you first met um, your first adopted son, TJ, and how you connected with him because you know he was going through all this stuff and he didn't believe that you could understand any of it. Then you start laying out all your stuff, and he was just blown away because, <laughs> oh, my God, somebody right. who's gone through the same kind of junk I've gone through. It, it creates right. a tremendous and, level of rapport yeah. for you. Yeah. Well, and that, and that you know, Everything, the, the piece that's inspiring to our, to our, I hope is inspiring to our audience, is we have, our society has gotten to a point of, uh, and, and, and I'm not trying to be negative, but a lot of times it, it's, we, we embrace the victimhood of people. We, um, yes. you know, 
your, your traumas are you and your traumas are why you're the way you are. Well, my, I am, your, your traumas can, you can be your traumas or your traumas could be a, a, excuse my language, your traumas could be your bitch if you want them to. Your traumas could be, I, I want to succeed because of the strength that I gained from going through my traumas. And that's what, that's the attitude that the resilience in people is the great gift. It is the great gift that, and, and resilience is learned, like helplessness is learned. And resilience is, is getting up and saying, you know, I'm, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to have, I won't be deterred by it. I'm, this is who I am. Instead of being ashamed of it, I'm moving forward. And correct and, me if I'm wrong. That, that, well, cor- correct, me if, correct me if I'm wrong. One of the things that you end up discovering when you do that is, okay, you start from this point of struggle. You decide, well, come heck or high water, I'm going to get through it. You get through it, and then things get easier. In other words, you develop a better comfort zone, which is pretty weird. Yes, and and one thing that I, I tell people along the way, you know, if if you're breathing today, and I assume if you're listening, you are. That's a good thing. Um, <laughs> I would hope so. You are, yeah, you are, one hundred percent successful for surviving and getting th- through things in your life you never thought you could survive. You have a perfect track record. You have survived everything that's come your way to be here. Now, I'm not saying you did it perfectly. I'm not saying everything went perfect doing it, but you survived it. There's stuff that you have survived you didn't think you could survive. And when you have a 100% success rate, the odds of you going further are going to even be better. You have a 100% success rate of being successful, getting through stuff you couldn't believe you could get through. And here you are. Yet you're still here. That's right. So That's true. when you look at it that way, whatever's going to come along, there's a difference. And, and that's just surviving. The next step that we look at is thriving. And you, you, that's what our topic, having the courage to thrive. Let's take the survival mechanism and make it thriving. And the difference between thriving and just survival, it, it's real easy. It's just your perspective. It is when, when I, I look at I look at everything that I've been through, and it's either a horror story or an amazing, just an amazing event of experiences in life. There's few things I haven't experienced, and I'm here, and and, and I'm thriving in my life. And I believe a lot of those experiences are, are why I'm thriving. They're not a part of the problem. They're part of the solution. And all that changed was my perspective of those things. So we're encouraging everybody to change their perspective, not just in their own lives, but also their perspective about LOA Today. We, we want you to subscribe if you have not yet subscribed. Um, easy to do, too. You go to LOAToday.net. There are buttons there that say click to subscribe. So funnily enough, you click to subscribe. And particularly if you are an iPhone user, it becomes really as easy at that point because the phone just kind of walks you through step by step until you've actually got you know the subscription set. And once the subscription set, of course, then all the shows show up and you can just play whatever show you want whenever you want to. And it constantly updates automatically. If you have uh, an Android style phone such as a Motorola or a Samsung or you know, LG or, or Nokia or one of those guys, um, it's a little tiny bit more difficult. But you don't have to struggle a lot. This is minor struggle we're talking about here. All you do is go to the Play Store and download a podcast app of some kind. There are a lot of them there. Um, Wendy Dillard uh, recommends the Podcast Manager. It's a free app. And once you've got that, then go into the app and do a search and search for LOA Today, and you'll find it and be able to subscribe. So subscribe is the first step. Share is the second step. Once you've subscribed, share with a friend because we're finding people who subscribe and continue to listen. They're listening a lot. I mean, Joel, last month, the average subscriber, 30 plays, 30 different shows last month. I mean, it's just phenomenal. That's amazing to me. That, it is that, amazing. That is amazing. And I, I'm very excited that people are finding benefit in what we're talking about. This is a passion that you and I both share. Our, our other co-hosts are, are equally passionate about it. And, and I don't know of any place else. And I'm not just saying this because we're doing it. I've listened to other Law of Attraction shows. And while they often have some very quality uh, content, I think our show consistently offers uh, uh, hope. It offers.
offers a, a, a daily inspiration, which is all about, and it offers real life examples of law of attraction. It does, and it offers laughter too. We get laughter in, and that that's something that not everybody can can claim is true. So that's our claim to fame, fame right there. <laughs> yeah. But Joel, it's been great. Uh, I'm glad that we got to do it. Let's do it again next Thursday. See you later, Walt. Thank you for everything. All right, and we'll invite you all to join us next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>